Hi, everybody. To start off our night, we have author Martin Wilson, who wrote What They Always Tell Us, and We Now Return to Regular Life. Welcome, Martin, and thank you so much for chatting with us tonight. We're very happy to have you. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Can you please start us off with just a little introduction about yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Martin Wilson, as you know. I've written two young adult novels. My most recent is called We Now Return to Regular Life, which is about a teenage boy who's 13. He goes missing. He is gone for three years. His family and friends, they're very upset. Um, and then one day he shows back up. And the novel really is about how his disappearance and how his reappearance affect all of their lives. And I am a writer who lives in New York. I also work in publishing. Um, I am from Alabama though, and that's where I set my books. Um, the question is about your books both share a common thread in sibling relationships with Alex and James and what they always tell us and Sam and Beth and we now return to regular life. What compels you to, to write about si sibling relationships and that dynamic? Um, I, that's a good question. I, I, I'm really into writing about families and siblings. I have two siblings, so that that was a big part of my um, upbringing, just negotiating um, relationships between a brother and a sister. They were both older. Um, I think if I, obviously, if I didn't have siblings, I wouldn't probably write about it much. But um, it was interesting, the, the shifts and the ebbs and flows of those relationships. And I think there's just so much, so much there. And I think, you know, ultimately, in my books, the sibling relationships are troubled and then strained and then kind of redemptive. And um, I would say that my relationships with my siblings are, are very strong. And I think that's sort of why I end up writing about that. The next question is, how did you get started writing? <clears throat> I started writing probably before college, but not very seriously. And um, it was just sort of scribbles here and there and nothing very serious. But I always knew I was, dr I, I knew I wanted to be a writer even though I didn't know what that meant. Um, and in college, I took a creative writing class my junior year and um, it went really well. My teacher, you know, told me that I should continue that path. And, you know, that's the encouragement I needed to kind of believe in myself and believe in, you know, um, the talent maybe that I had, although there's a lot more talented people than I am for sure. But um, that's how I got started. And, you know, once I, I did that, I went to graduate school. Um, but really the most important thing was that I just kept at it and, um, you know, I could never not do it. <clears throat> Next question is, can you tell us about the process of getting your book published? Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know if we have an hour, but, um, the first book was a lot easier than the second book, and I'll just kind of try to be quick about it. Um, I had a friend who was friends with an agent. Um, I told him I wrote about young people. He represented young adult authors. I gave him some of my work. He was into it. He sold. He, I, I, he said to me, write a novel, start a novel, and give him three chapters. So I did that, and it took me really six months. So. I gave him that and then he sort of sold it without even talking to me. He, he, there was an editor who was interested and I knew about this. So he sold it on a partial, which was, I think that's a lot less common now. Um, this is like 10 years later. So it was sort of a Cinderella kind of experience. Just, you know, I'd been toiling away for many years writing, but that process of it getting published, finding an agent, getting a publisher was pretty quick and, and painless. But then the second book um, was rejected by my original publisher. Um, the editor at that publishing house told me that that book would never be published. No one would want to publish it. Um, 
And then my agent, we tried to resell it. Then my agent passed away. Then I had to find a new agent. Um, and then I had to do a lot of revision and we finally sold it, but it was, it was an ordeal. It was very trying. So they were, you know, there were polar opposite experiences about getting my book published. Um, the most challenging, what's the most challenging aspect of writing? I think for me, it's finding the time to write. Um, I have a full-time job that is pretty involving. Um, I have many interests in life. You know, I'm not one of those writers who doesn't like movies or TV. Um, I, I love both. I have friends, <laughs> I play tennis. So for me, it's carving out the time um, and being disciplined. And I think, um, once I find that time and once I get sink my teeth into something, then it's, it's great. But it's, for me, it's a matter of just finding the time and, and just, you know, you've got to sit down and do it. That's really the main thing, finding the time and then having the discipline. Those are, I think are the hardest things. Cause if you, if you love it, the other things are going to be a, a challenge that you'll, you'll, you'll face with, with, um, vigor. Oh, um, what is my favorite word and what is my least favorite word? I don't know that I have answers to these. Um, maybe my favorite word is love. I know that's going to sound hokey and cheesy, but um, I think, you know, everyone who writes something is almost writing about love. Um, not necessarily romantic love, maybe familial love, because, um, you know, no one can really get by without without some some type of love. Um, my least favorite word, um, maybe Trump, but I'll just leave it at that. If you had to choose a career other than what you currently do, what would you do? Um, interesting. I, you know, part of me would love to have been, you know, a librarian or an archivist. I find, you know, archiving and people and writers like diaries and and just digging around in that kind of research, pretty fascinating. Um, I wouldn't mind being a professor um, and on a whole different um, realm of the spectrum. I think in some ways that all writers are actors. Um, and when I was a child, I did act and I gave that up. But um, I think part of me always wondered what I could have done there because um, I think to be a writer, you kind of have to be access the same kind of emotions and feelings that actors have to access in their work. And what profession would I never want to do? Um, probably a politician um, or, you know, something very, um, <laughs> a lot of physical labor, because um, I'm kind of, I can be lazy. What scares you? Hmm. I think what scares me is the future. Um, that sounds very grim, but I think we live in really um, challenging times and I think there's a lot of challenges ahead. Um, and I think once you get a certain age and you guys are all young, so I think just enjoy your, your, your young years and have fun and don't worry, um, but also be engaged with the world. But you know, the future, once you reach a certain age, the future is, is less certain. You think you're going to have a set path, and it's it's never really that way. So um, I think the future, and I think the future involves like just the state of the world, and I think it's in many ways kind of scary right now. What makes me laugh? Um, my friends, um, sarcasm, um, sarcastic jokes, and I will say that um, I grew up. You know, I was. I was in my late teens and twenties in the nineties and I loved Seinfeld. I just, and I still love Seinfeld. It makes me laugh like nothing else. So if you don't know, you know what Seinfeld is, um, you should check it out. It's, but maybe you won't find it funny cause I'm older than you, but that's what makes me laugh. What is my favorite food? Um, well, I'm not going to be a very original, but I would say I love pizza and that's probably one of the top ones. I do like chicken in all varieties. Um, I don't eat a lot of meat, but I eat chicken as the meat for me. And um, 
to my detriment, I love French fries. So um, yeah, I think I like all the things that are bad for you mostly. My favorite place to travel to. Well, on one hand, I do love going home to see my parents um, in Tuscaloosa. They still live there. Um, it's not the most glamorous place and I don't love everything about it, but I do love my family and I do love going home and um, being in that world and that world where I set my novels. And my other favorite place to travel and I go there every summer is Cape Cod, um, Provincetown, Massachusetts. I go every summer with my friends and it's just sort of this wonderful ends of the earth kind of remote beach um, town that's just sort of my happy place. Do I have any distinct memories of an interaction in a library or with a librarian? Um, yes, I mean, I've always had great interactions with, my libra with librarians, especially when I was younger, when I was in elementary school, I just remember the magical, how magical it was to discover new books. Um, and they were always so kind and wonderful. Um, in high school, I basically hung out in the library to avoid eating lunch in the cafeteria because I hated it. It was um, not my favorite place. So the library has always sort of been a refuge. And um, in college, I remember just, you know, going on Saturday mornings to study at this, the college on campus. And I found like a little, um, nook and um you know kind of enjoyed my studies there and um you know i've just always been attracted to um people who value the importance of reading and books and i can't say i've never ever had a negative experience at a library or with a librarian what have i read in the last year uh i knew i would love this because I always forget what I've read um, even though we, even though if I read it like a week ago um, I did read um, Nick Stone's book Dear Martin um, which I really found really wonderful and powerful um, I met Nick at a book festival and I was also drawn to her book obviously because I was like oh here's a book about Martin um, and I really loved that and I really loved meeting her. Um, I need to read a lot more YA, but I, my day job, I have to read a lot for work. Um, I work at a publishing house and I do publicity and that is a lot of, of um, reading for work. Um, I am totally blanking. I do read a ton. Um, so I think I'm just going to flub this answer, but um, I would say one of the standouts of the past year and a half was the book um, Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders. Um, and my go-to novelist is Ann Tyler, who is just, um, if you've never read any Ann Tyler, I recommend reading her. Um, Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant is one of the best novels ever written. And she's still writing. She just published her I don't know what number novel it is, but um, she's about 78 and she's still producing every novel every two years and she's just fantastic. And she has a new one and I can't wait to read that. And um, I need to dip into a lot more of the amazing YA books that are out there. And um, I recently became friendly with Brandy Colbert, Colbert and um, I wanna read her books too. So um, there's a lot, a lot out there that's great. Who is my favorite fictional character? Oh, goodness. Um, I don't have a really original answer. I think um, I would have to think long and hard because there are many and I don't, I think if I really named the honest one, it would be something obscure that no one would understand or get, but who doesn't love Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird? Um, one of the classics and one of the classic narrators in all of literature. What was your favorite childhood book? Um, I'm looking right now because I have my bookshelves right next to me and I don't think I have anything handy. Um, I did love um, the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Um, I'm embarrassed to admit. Um, as a really young kid, I loved the George Marshall books, like Yummers and George, George and Martha. 
Um, I was sort of a, a late reader. I mean, I did read a good number of things, but um, the book that really got me into reading was not a, a children's book. It was called The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. And I read it in high school and my father kind of pushed it on me and it was, it was a big book. And I was just like, ugh, all right, if you say it's so good. And I think I would get through it. And then I was, I was just so um, captivated by it. And that book really, I tore through it. And that was the book that made me love reading. So I always think of that book as, as my favorite of my youth, because that's what um, launched me into a love affair uh, with reading. What is my favorite TV show, my favorite movie? My favorite band. Um, well, TV, first of all, there's so much good TV. Um, when I grew up, there was not a lot of good TV and we only had like five networks. Um, I'm just kidding, but it was, it was not as abundant um, as the options now. There's almost so much now that you can't have a favorite. There's just, there's a new, every day someone at work is like, oh, you gotta watch this. You gotta watch this. You got, I mean, today I had three recommendations. Um, so, but recently my favorite show was The Americans um, with Kerry Russell and Matthew Reese, and they play Russian um, spies in the US. Um, it's just a really well done, well acted, well written show. Um, I already mentioned my love for Seinfeld. Um, an older show that I loved is Lost. Um, but there's, there's a ton, I could name about 15 others. There's just so much good TV and it's it's a great you know people used to say tv would rot your brain but now it's just movies will rot your brain really like tv has almost surpassed mainstream movies i would say speaking of movies my favorite i think it would be a little surprising but although if you read my books they make appearances i think at least in the second one um but my favorite movies oddly enough for alien and aliens um i do love sci-fi i'm not a sci-fi fanatic but um I love those movies because they're sci-fi, but they're also very much about relationships between people and how, how stressful situations people behave. And there's just a lot of drama. And I love also seeing a strong female character dominate. Um, I think when I first saw that, it was really kind of a new thing. Um, so those two are fantastic. And I, I can't tell you if I rate one higher than the other, because they're also very different from each other. Um, and I, you know, I do love the teen movies like Clueless and Heather's, um, I would say are, are pretty high up there as well. Oh, the band, I didn't answer the band. You know, I'm not very cool with music, so I'm just gonna skip that one to not embarrass myself. Is there an author you would freak out about meeting in real life? Um, I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of authors who I admire and, um, respect and love. So I actually have met um, a number of people of my favorite writers in real life. Not not all of them, but, um, and I won't even name them because I don't know if, you know, a lot of you guys who know a lot of them. Um, but I think I'm really a big fan of Ann Tyler. I've actually corresponded with her, so I would kind of freak out meeting her in real life. Um, but other than that, um, I don't know who I'd freak out with. I think I would be just really excited. Um, to meet, you know, anyone whose books I've loved. And I continue to get to do that, which is really nice. <clears throat> there are auto, here's the next question. There are audio versions of my books. Did I have any involvement in that production? Have I listened to the recording? It's a good question. Um, the first one I've only listened to a little bit. Um, I remember just sort of being, I wasn't involved in that process, um, but I did meet or I did get some info on the actor who read the, the first book and he was really great. Um, for the second, for the new book, second book, um, they actually sent me sound clips of um, the three females who were reading Beth and the three males who were reading Josh. And I kind of got to um, vote on my favorite. And I think who the ones I liked were end up, ended up being the ones chosen, but I have not um, listened to <laughs> 
either of those. Um, I just find would find that you know pretty self indulgent with all the good podcasts and all the good music. I'm not gonna probably not yet um, spend you know ten hours listening to my own book, but I mean I think I would love to hear it just to see how they capture it. Um, and I should do that at some point, but I haven't yet. <clears throat> what projects are you currently working on? Well, I am um, early on into my third novel, which is really my fourth novel because one of the novels I wrote, I put in a, a box and never have finished, um, which is sort of a nightmare. But this new novel I'm working on is, um, sort of tied to my first book in that it's set um, a year after that first book. And in the first book I wrote, the time was never really explicitly told, but in thinking about the new book, I realized that that first book was really set in um, 1989 to 1990. So this new book takes place in 1990 to 91. Um, it's about, uh, a high school junior who's kind of an outcast and it's sort of about his relationship and I'm not a romantic relationship in that terms, but his relationships with a couple, um, a popular couple, um, the boyfriend and the girlfriend. And it's, um, there's also sort of a movie within the novel kind of story. So there's sort of two stories going along and I think I'll, I'll leave it at that because I don't even know if that makes sense, but um, to give more away, I think is gonna spoil my, uh, I think giving too much away ruins things. So, but I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm excited to, I, I think some of the characters from the first book might make appearances. I'm excited to kind of go back in time to that era. Um, I've been listening to music from that era and watching movies and, um, it's fun to kind of revisit that period in a, when I'm in a happier place. So, um, yeah, I'm really knee deep in that and it will probably take me another year or so to finish it. So that's what I'm working on now. What's on my bucket list? Oh, um, <laughs> good question. I don't really make a bucket list. I think my bucket list would revolve around traveling. So I would really love to travel places I've never been. And that includes like Spain, Italy, Australia, um, uh, India, um, some places in South America. Um, I've been to some places in South America and places in Europe um, and Mexico, but, um, and I've been to Hawaii, but mainly I would just wanna travel all these wonderful places I've never been. And um, <clears throat> I don't think I have any other crazy like bucket lists. Um, bucket list things like jumping out of an airplane or climbing a mountain. Um, those are not for me, for sure. What advice would you give your teenage self? Um, that's great. I would just say, um, if I were talking to my teenage self, um, be proud of who you are. Don't be ashamed of, of who and what you are. Um, I think in some ways I was, I felt very isolated and, and not, I didn't have a lot of friends when I was a teenager. And I think, I think part of that made me who I am and I'm, I'm happy with who I became. And I think I wouldn't have become the person I became if I'd been Mr. Popular or Mr. Athlete. So I guess the only thing I would say is, you know, things, you know, it's a cliche, but things get better and, um, hold your head up and be proud of who you are. And it's, you're not gonna be stuck with these people your whole life. The, the great thing about adulthood is that you, you know, besides work, you get to choose the people you have to be around. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of peer pressure in, in high school and even in college to hang around people that you really don't like, but you think you should hang out with them because they're cool. Um, I think when you grow up a little, you realize that you don't have to to do any of that and you just have to do what makes you happy. So I would say do what makes you happy is one other thing. And the final question, do I have any advice for aspiring writers? Um, for sure, I would say one of the biggest things is to just read a lot. You can't be a writer if you don't like to read. You can't be a writer if you don't read. 
that's how you learn. I think, you know, going to grad school and taking writing classes and being in workshops is great. Um, but I think reading is a better education, reading a lot, um, reading wide and far, reading in different genres. You'll learn what makes a book work and what makes a, what makes writing good. And then you'll also, you know, you realize that your writing style, you, there, there's many different styles and you, you don't have to be the writer who say is so great at describing a physical landscape. You can be the writer who is in touch with characters' emotions. Um, you don't have to be amazing at every aspect of it. Um, but you'll find all that through reading. And I think the other thing is just put in the time and sit down and do it. Um, and if you sit down thinking that you need to write every sentence perfectly, then you're just never gonna get anywhere. So, you know, just think about writing as like throwing a bunch of clay into a pile and it's gonna be a huge mess. And through revising, you're just gonna go shape that clay into something really great, but it's gonna take a while. You just have to, don't let perfection stop you from starting because you believe me, I'm the novel I'm working on now is, I have four chapters, but they're like terrible. But I know <clears throat> that I'll get to go back and make them hopefully a ton better. So that's my advice. Read and um, just stick at it and, you know, don't expect perfection at first, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to work hard and, um, and make a lot of revisions. But I think you'll find that I, I find that revision is where it's at. It's really the funnest part. Thank you, Martin, so much for joining us tonight. Uh, so our next author chat is going to be at 9 p.m. with John David Anderson. So we're going to go ahead and stop our broadcast here. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.